This week, we'll take a look at the Storm Prediction Center's GeoJSON GIS outputs and how we can read those in Python and use them to plot a map like this. Welcome to another MapPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. We've talked about the Storm Prediction Center and the maps that they produce before, but we're going to look at some different GIS products. Things have been changed up some since those last videos many, many episodes ago. And we'll recreate this map using GeoJSON. GeoJSON is a variation of JSON that's becoming very popular as a way to share georeferenced data and it's still relatively compact. If we go to spc.noaa.gov slash GIS, we can see all of the GIS products that are available. Now, KMZ is a great format. It's a zipped up uh, KML, and there are many ways that we can ingest that in Python and play with it, and maybe we'll look at some of those in the future. But today we want to focus on the GeoJSON specifically. So here are all the links. They have layered and no layered versions. We'll use the no layered GeoJSON. Uh, doesn't really matter for this particular application, but we'll just get a day one categorical file. And you could do this for tornado or hail or wind, but we'll just do a categorical outlook. So I'm going to copy that link and we'll go into a Python notebook. We know that we're making a plot, so we can go ahead and do some imports. We'll import matplotlib. I'm going to import geopandas because we know we're working with georeference data, so that's probably going to be a useful tool. From Cartapy, we're going to import the coordinate reference system as CCRS. And then we're going to import cartapy.feature as C feature, so we can get those state and country outlines and so on. All right, so now we need to go ahead and read our data. This is actually not the hard part. Geopandas data frame, or GDF, is geopandas.read file, and we paste our URL in, and that's all there is to it. If we look at our Geopandas data frame, we see that we've got uh, some valid and expire times, uh, time is issued, labels, uh, more label information, stroke, fill, and geometries. Really, we're only interested in the geometries to make this plot. But you can and we will go ahead and borrow the stroke and fill colors for now. You could do more with the labels and these valid and expire times if you so chose. All right. We can also look at the coordinate reference system that's attached to this GeoPandas data frame because that is built into the GeoPandas data frame. And we can see, for example, our ellipsoid is WGS84. And that we're working with latitude and longitude values. So our projection is Plat Curry. All right, so let's go ahead and create a coordinate reference system for our map. And we're going to use our favorite Lambert conformal central latitude of 35 central longitude of minus 100 and standard parallels of 30 and 60. We'll also create a data coordinate reference system which we know our data are just Latin lawns or Plat Curry. So finally, we're ready to make a map. So our figure, we're going to create an instance of that first using plot.figure. And our fig size, let's go ahead and set to 14 by 12. Create an axis instance using plot.subplot, one row, one column, first plot, and the projection is going to be our map coordinate reference system. 
I'm going to go ahead and set an extent, or the bounds of my map. And we'll go minus 120, minus 75, 25, and 50. But remember, this is expected in the coordinate system of the map, which is Lambert conformal. And that's not what this is. These are latitude and longitudes. So we need to go ahead and specify that we are using Black Cree, or we could just say data CRS, actually. We've already got that as a variable. We'll add a couple of features here. The coastline feature. I'll use with scale to specify 1 to 50 million. And we'll use states. And with scale, 1 to 50 million. We'll go ahead and specify a line width of 0 0.5 there as well. So if we run that, it's going to create a beautiful empty map for us. And it looks like our bounds are good. I like the thickness of the coast and the thickness of the state outlines, so we're ready to plot our data. Now looking at our GeoPandas data frame, we see we actually have two different geometry types. A polygon type and a multi-polygon type. Now, if we use the add geometries method, it's going to expect a multi-polygon. We've got plural, multiple geometries. Yeah, but we don't always have multiple polygons. If we look at the map, okay, we might have a marginal multi-polygon or a thunderstorm multi-polygon, but there's only one slight risk polygon, for example. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of logic to catch that and to deal with it. I'm going to first write a loop for underscore comma row in gdf dot iter rows. Now I generally don't like iterating over data frames, but it's the best way I found to deal with this somewhat complex format. Remember iter rows is going to go over each row of your data frame and return a tuple. The first thing is the index. The second thing is the data from that row. So we don't care about the index, we're gonna throw it away using the unpacking syntax here. Okay, so now we need our logic to catch single polygons. So I'm going to look at the geometry data series in that row, and I'm going to access the geometry type attribute, which is a string if the geometry type is a polygon, then I'm going to reset the geometry for that row to be a list that contains the original geometry. So I'm basically taking a single geometry and putting it in a list where it is the only geometry, but it's now an iterable. It's now a list, so it's something that Add Geometries knows how to work with. It can work with lists of geometries or iterables of geometries or a multi-polygon. So that's going to take care of our uh, potential conflict that we've got. And now we can add the geometries. X, add geometries, row, the geometry part of that row or that data series. The coordinate reference system is our data CRS. So let's see what happens. Okay, we get these big blobs, and there are some outlines here. That looks roughly right, but we want to go ahead and dress the map up a little bit. So I'm going to assign the face color to be the row fill, which remember these are just color codes that the SPC gives us. The edge color is going to be row stroke. And I'm going to make it slightly transparent so we can see our state outlines below. And there we have our map. If we take a look at our map and take a look at what's on the SBC website, 
we see there, very similar. Maybe we could adjust our alpha a little bit to make it look a little more exact. But as you can see, it's really a relatively simple task to take GeoJSON data, use GeoPandas to read it, and make a map of it. The only tricky things you have to watch out for are those single polygons and those multi-polygon geometries. We'll continue to look at some different GIS formats and how we can deal with them in Python. But until then, I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.